Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And holy schmoly, we are definitely going to be talking about that today because we're going to be talking about how you can take the steps to make yourself more successful. And I think that's especially important right now. I was talking with my guests before the program because we've been in this pandemic for a while. We've been sitting around in our home offices. We haven't been doing what we wanna be doing, but what we have been doing is a lot of self introspection and thinking, what are we gonna do with our lives? What's gonna happen? And so please join me in welcoming Coach A.M. Williams to our program today. Welcome, Coach. How are you doing today? Doing excellent. Thanks, Deb. It's a pleasure being here with you today. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you and then we will dive into this. So Coach A.M. Williams is a results coach who specializes in helping experts transform their expertise into high leveraged offers. He is the owner of A.M. Williams Coaching Company, LLC, and has personally coached and trained numerous executives, lawyers, doctors, recording artists, and other coaches and consultants over the past 10 years from a bed bound state. Having been diagnosed with incomplete paraplegia, which is extreme weakness in legs, legs, Coach AM has discovered the gift of challenges and has mastered the art of transforming adversity into one's greatest advantage. He is also one of the best-selling authors of the book, Resilience, Turning Setbacks into Comebacks. His Yes Go radio show on bsrnradio.com is syndicated across 300 radio stations and reaches international listers across the UK and North America each month. Coach AM's magnificent obsession is helping high-performing professionals and entrepreneurs use leverage to create the life they want. Well, again, Coach, welcome. Pleasure being here. Thank you. Great. Well, I always like to kind of jump in the way back machine. Tell us how it is that you got to where you are today and how you discovered that this really is your passion in life. Well, I, I simply tell people, you know, when I was 28 years old, mm -hmm. I almost died. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing that ever happened in my life. Mm -hmm. I, um, can, I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I uh, actually had went to the hospital thinking that I had pulled a muscle in my groin. Okay. Only to find out that um, my doctor was telling me, sir, you have cysts on your spine. This Ooh. was after countless hours of testing. Mm -hmm. um, they said, and it could be cancerous mm -hmm. and we need to operate immediately mm -hmm. or you could be dead within mm -hmm. a matter of 10 days. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, it went from uh, slight concern to mm -hmm. urgent Right. and life-threatening. Mm -hmm. um, they were concerned that if the cyst burst, it could get into my bloodstream and immediately mm -hmm. kill me. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to take any chances. Um, and so we needed to move expeditiously to find mm -hmm. out what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, they ran more tests and decided to operate a couple of days later. Mm -hmm. And um, having had that surgery, um, this the this, this, they found I had two cysts on my spine. Mm. One they were able to remove, the other mm -hmm. one stayed in because it was inside the spinal column. Okay. I forever to this day call that one the teacher mm -hmm. um, because it had to stay with me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and upon that, them finding that out, they put a shunt in that cyst in efforts that it would drain itself mm -hmm. and right. um, ultimately it would, it would be gone. Mm -hmm. But there was no... There was no indication whatsoever that I would um, not be able to walk again. My mm -hmm. doctor said, you should be able to walk again. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, I, I got up, I started taking steps. And before you know it, I was walking. Mm -hmm. um, I was walking with a cane. I got out of the hospital and um, 
I was navigating my way through life. Hey, okay, mm -hmm. I'll just work back, get my strength back mm -hmm. up. And um, things seem to be, you know, turning around mm -hmm. at least uh, making, I had to adapt to this, you know, the surgery and things to mm -hmm. re my strength. Right. Mm -hmm. However, um, about a year or so later, I started noticing that things were getting worse. They weren't mm -hmm. getting better and mm -hmm. moving around became a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had an ice storm and I was mm -hmm. standing on a sheet of ice and my legs were just spread, straight, just kind of Ooh. spreading apart and I couldn't mm -hmm. pull them back together. Mm -hmm. Well, I had some help. My brother had came, he was coming to my office to come see me. Mm -hmm. And he actually um, helped me to regain my standing. And I mm -hmm. went to the doctor again mm -hmm. and um, they found out that the shunt had came out mm -hmm. of the cyst mm -hmm. and uh, they said they needed to operate again. Mm -hmm. uh, my gait was severely off and they needed to do something mm -hmm. quickly. Right. It could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well, I've did it before. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. Been there, do done that. Again, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Well, this time after they had the surgery and they asked me to move my legs, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. They asked me to move my toes. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And they looked at each other. Then they looked at me and said, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. You know, I didn't <laughs> mm -hmm. know what that meant, but um, come to, they, they diagnosed me quadriplegic and I'm like, mm -hmm. huh? And I moved my arms and they're right. like, well, he's clearly not quadriplegic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then they said, well, he's paraplegic mm -hmm. and I moved my leg. Mm -hmm. Someone is like, well, he's not paraplegic. Right. So they diagnosed me incomplete paraplegic, mm -hmm. which basically means I'm severe weakness in the legs. Right. right. Um, so it was like, well, we just got to get you back up. And, you know, mm -hmm. just that we thought it was more of a, uh, conditioning issue. Mm -hmm. You know, we would right. just learn work how those to, muscles do all of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, we could, we could just work that out and get mm -hmm. back up. Well, they didn't tell me I, uh, what they didn't tell me at first was that I actually contracted MRSA in the operating room. Ah, mm -hmm. Good old MRSA. And it, it lied in my skin dormant for mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. um, two years later, I'm in my home. My skin mm -hmm. explodes in four different places. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm lying on my, my living room floor with uh, temperatures significantly mm -hmm. elevated mm -hmm. holes in my skin. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, and they rushed me to the emergency room, mm -hmm. which I got moved to ICU uh, quickly. Right. And... Um, for the next seven years of my life, I'm mm -hmm. in and out of hospitals. I'm mm -hmm. ICU, CCU, mm -hmm. you name mm -hmm. the U, I did it. <laughs> um, the acute care facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed in three nursing homes. Mm -hmm. um, I was at that time about 30, 31 years old mm -hmm. and I'm in and out of nursing homes. Um, and I went into one and they had just rolled the person that was in the room that mm -hmm. I was going in out into the hallway. Mm -hmm. Only thing, they had a sheet over them. Uh oh, oh no. Because they had just died. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting here in a stretcher mm -hmm. and they were sitting there in a stretcher. Oh, this is not good. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, what is life trying to teach me mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. And um, it's like, Oh no, you not going to be and, me. And, and that's, mm -hmm. that's not, you know, so I probably am the only person who's ever called the hospital from a nursing home mm -hmm. um, and said, you got to get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not and, staying here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. like, you got to come get me. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't stay here. Mm -hmm. The The temperature in the room was a hundred degrees because they were anemic. Oh. Ah. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the person um, was anemic mm -hmm. and it just, and this was, it was just not it. Yeah, and just, uh, yeah, bad all the way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that night, I ended up running into an administrator mm -hmm. who sat up with me at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And she said, I know this is not comfortable. And um, I had tried to reach out for my parents. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And they were like... Andre, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. You you need 
you you need to do this. I know you don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. And I fought it like, you know, everything I could, mm -hmm. but they were telling me that I needed to do this. And mm -hmm. an administrator, she just kind of calmed me down, came in, she talked to me for mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. And we were, uh, before she knew, she's like, if you'll just stay here tonight, she said, I promise you in mm -hmm. the morning, we'll get you moved. Mm -hmm. And um, she told me, she said, after talking with me for about 15 minutes, she says, you need to get the noise out of your life. Mm. If you get the noise out of your life, mm -hmm. she said, you're going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that meant. Right. She said, you got to find a way to quiet the noise. Mm -hmm. And she said, the best way to do that sometime is just be silent. Mm -hmm. No TV, no mm -hmm. learn how to get present. Mm -hmm. So I listened to what she said and, um, I practiced it for a little while mm -hmm. and it was scary at first. Right. We're used to it's very noise. scary because, mm -hmm. you know, what, one of the things I've learned from a book, um, he said, people are desperate to be unconscious. Mm -hmm. They don't want to face themselves. Right. People do not really want to mm -hmm. face the noise that's going mm -hmm. on in mm -hmm. their head. And that'll be relevant a little later. Mm -hmm. However, through that process, I began to, understand some things I start, began to look at some things in my mm -hmm. life and um, I would spend the next seven years literally going in and out of these facilities mm -hmm. in and out of the hospital and then one time I had a six month stay Ooh. and um, when I was staying there um, I remember going through rehab mm -hmm. and I was watching people practice standing and mm -hmm. um, doing exercises with their arms and everything. And it was so interesting watching mm -hmm. these individuals work so hard to do something we think literally right. nothing seems so about. basic. Um, mm -hmm. Pushing something, something mm -hmm. so basic. And we, I've watched people work tirelessly mm -hmm. to pick up their leg and put it on an uneven surface and then back on an even surface. Mm -hmm. I, I I really began to gain an appreciation for the the muscle strength that it takes to put your arm over your head. Right. And so in the process of doing that, the whole new world just opened up to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I began to cheer these people on. Mm -hmm. And um, as they were taking steps, I, I would be standing at the end. I did not know them. Mm -hmm. But I would be standing on the other side of that therapist mm -hmm. and going, come on, uh -huh. do it one more time. Come oh, on, I love come it. on, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. So one of the persons who observed me said, you know what? You, you are a great coach. And I've mm -hmm. said to myself, no, I play, I play sports in school, mm -hmm. but I never, I said, I'm not a coach. Mm -hmm. They said, no, 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 not that kind of coach. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what kind of coach? Mm -hmm. And and they said, a life coach. Mm -hmm. I said, you're very motivational and mm -hmm. you'd be a great life coach. I didn't mm -hmm. even know what a life coach was. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went back to my room, jumped on the computer mm -hmm. and I saw what a life coach was. Mm -hmm. I saw several different certifications for mm -hmm. it. And I started studying life coaching. And I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I got my certification to become a life coach mm -hmm. in the hospital. While I, I was in the it. hospital, mm -hmm. um, I also said, you know what, I can't, you know, just do this in here all day. I got to find a mm -hmm. way to get the word out right. and um, and uh, encourage more people. Mm -hmm. I uh, So I looked online and found out what it start, takes to start an online radio show. Mm -hmm. And I started an online radio show. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Right there in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, all of this stuff is going on. The, the profession that I had, the banking career that I had, mm -hmm. I lost it. Right. Um, uh, the friends that I had, I lost it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I lost 90% of my income and 95% of my friends. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. I lost the relationship mm -hmm. uh, I was in at the time. Um, and I spent several holidays by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a hospital. My mom mm -hmm. and dad didn't even know the facility that I was in mm -hmm. at the time. So I had to spend like Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, all by myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it, but as I went back and looked back, it was like, 
I'm getting rid of the noise mm. in my life so mm -hmm. I can get quiet here. Mm -hmm. So when I going through all of this, doing what I was doing soon enough, it happened. Mm -hmm. I heard a voice that said something in your life can be leveraged mm -hmm. to create something you want. Mm. Something in your life could be leveraged to create. Now, again, it was like, Mr. Miyagi talking to Daniel's son, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, washing walls and scrubbing mm -hmm. boards and all that. Right. And I'm like, I, I have no idea what, yeah, this, what the I heck? have to deal with mm -hmm. this. Um, so, but I just kept doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Little did I know, um, because I had developed this frame of mind, I was taking several different medications a day. Mm -hmm. But because my mind was beginning to really go to a different place mm -hmm. beyond the hospital mm -hmm. I could see myself doing mm -hmm. some other bigger and better things mm -hmm. that voice became more prevalent something in your life could be leveraged mm -hmm. to create something you want mm -hmm. and before you know it people started calling in on my radio show mm -hmm. and um, it, it picked up traction mm -hmm. and one guy called in and he was from Great Britain mm -hmm. and he asked me a question and um I, I challenged him with the question and that just really just really created an onslaught of more people mm -hmm. calling. I began to help the gentleman mm -hmm. and before you know it, I got an email asking me um, what was my pricing for my coaching. Wow. No one knew I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. No one knew I was right. doing all of this from a mm -hmm. hospital bed, mm -hmm. but it became so noticeable mm -hmm. that the doctors told the nurses to put a sign on my door saying, please do not disturb. Yes. He's recording. On air. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Love it. So my hospital mm -hmm. room became a studio mm -hmm. and my own office. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about it was um, I would be recording. I would do the show and then they would say, how much is your coaching? And I didn't mm -hmm. know what to charge. Right, right. You hadn't thought right. that far. I, I hadn't thought mm -hmm. that far. But when it was asking me, I just threw a number out there mm -hmm. and I'm like, I can't believe it. But I'm I'm actually running a business from my hospital bed. <laughs> so my first client was a client I got in the hospital. Mm -hmm. They never knew about it to several years later. Mm -hmm. um, that ended up in the process of me doing that in the radio mm -hmm. show, my healing picked up dramatically. Right. Um, and I was eventually able to leave there. Mm -hmm. And they took me into a nursing and an, 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 a um, rehab mm -hmm. centers, a skilled nursing facility. It was mm -hmm. a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And I got a private room. Ooh. And I started taking clients in the nursing mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. I love it. So people would come to the nursing home, mm -hmm. see this reception. Again, this is so important. Mm -hmm. Like, just like you go into an office. Right. You meet the receptionist. Mm -hmm. I'm here for an appointment. Mm -hmm. This is what was happening. Right. It was just a different home. type of facility. Mm -hmm. It was a different type of facility. And so the people would come in. I'd have my own setup in my room where they would come in and we would discuss mm -hmm. business talk, this and, that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and whatever. I was consulting them mm -hmm. or we would do coaching mm -hmm. um, in there. And then, you know, and, and I was creating income like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. while I was in the nursing facility. Wow. I began my healing was still growing, mm -hmm. still growing. And that voice kept something mm -hmm. in your life could be leveraged to create mm -hmm. something you want. I still didn't understand it, but I was doing this. So I was mm -hmm. an unconscious competent. Mm -hmm. They eventually let me go home about mm -hmm. three months later. Mm -hmm. When I went home, they were like, well, you're still going, you're, at, you're going, home, going home, but you're not out of the woods yet. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, all right. If I have to do another six months, I can do mm -hmm. that on my head. Mm -hmm. Well, that six months turned into 10 years. Ooh. It turned into 10 years mm -hmm. in a bed bound state. Mm -hmm. Now I went through all of this. I had already from the age of 28 to 35, mm -hmm. I had already been in hospitals right. all that time. Mm -hmm. um, but they told me like, you know, it, it, we don't know exactly how long it could be, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to be in this position until your body completely heals. Mm -hmm. Well, I fought it. I fought it. You right. know, I fought it. I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a daughter. I didn't want to be away from her. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I would be sabotaging my care mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ran into um, a training by my now mentor and he was talking and I was like, my God, he is speaking directly to me. Mm -hmm. And I did the, I did something I would never encourage anyone to do. I actually um, rented a vehicle um, with my wife mm -hmm. uh, and we jumped in a van and went to Atlanta to see mm -hmm. this guy for two days. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anything contagious or whatever. It's just right, right. Mm -hmm. I had not healed. Mm -hmm. So I rode in a car oh, from North Carolina to Atlanta. That's a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, I had, I mean, I was bleeding, mm -hmm. leaking and all that, and, but I had to see this guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I get in front of him and he's talking, and I'm just like, man, it's like I'm looking at uh, you know, like it, 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 like it was, it was just so surreal. Mm -hmm. And I finally got to meet him and he told me, he said, it doesn't matter whether or not I was asking him about being a speaker and a trainer, mm -hmm. but could this be done from a homebound right. position mm -hmm. or something like that? He said, if you have information that people need, mm -hmm. it didn't matter whether you right. were on a stage in front mm -hmm. of them or at home, mm -hmm. they would pay you whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, your challenge, and he said, you need to learn how to show up stronger. Mm -hmm. So then again, something in your life could be leveraged to create something mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. want. I took that, went home, wrestled with it for mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Okay, I couldn't get out. My doctors found out what I did. They were like, what did you do? You know? <clears throat> so I had to go back and recover from all of that. Two years later, I go see the guy again and I'm telling him about what's going on in my life and uh, what navigating life in a wheelchair is like. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'm doing my college education, going to school, um, growing that, growing my coaching business. And um, he says to me, I'm like, you know what? I'm just tired of being disabled. Like I'm, I did not accept it. I didn't want right. it. I didn't want any mm -hmm. parts of it. I felt like it was um, slowing me down. It was keeping me from mm -hmm. being who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And he started asking me questions like, what were you, what are you doing now that you could, <coughs> couldn't do before? Right. Or how much of this was you doing before? Mm -hmm. Were you doing before? And I'm like, I wasn't doing any of it. He's like, you launched a business after you, you got in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah. You, you did this after you did that after you developed a coach after you did all right. that. And, and I'm just like, yeah, he says, so you want to do what I'm doing? I'm mm -hmm. like, yes. He said, so what do you think the gift in your adversity is? What's the gift in all of this? And I was, I was thrown because I couldn't tell him. And that question challenged me again for another two years. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the voice, something in your life could be leveraged. Mm -hmm. I finish an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, 3.5 plus. I mean, I was 3.93. Mm -hmm. That was the lowest my GPA ever was. And I'm currently right now in school to get my dissertation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Doing my dissertation. Mm -hmm. Also, six-figure coaching business. Mm -hmm radio show goes mm -hmm. international mm -hmm. and I become a best-selling co-author mm -hmm. still what's the gift in this mm -hmm. what's the gift in this what's right. the gift in it and I wrestled with that question something in your life could be leveraged to create mm -hmm. something you want and then it hit me like a ton of bricks it hit me like a ton of bricks because this thing was empowering me to do things and put me in positions that I never been put mm -hmm. in before right and the thing that i was leveraging was my adversity mm -hmm. once i began to reframe it right and ask myself what's the gift in it mm -hmm. napoleon hill said every adversity brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage mm. so whatever you think to the degree mm -hmm. that whatever you think adversity is hurting you there is an equivalent advantage. Mm -hmm. It will give you that much mm -hmm. more of an advantage. So I, I began to reframe my adversity and where I would be afraid to do social media um, 
because I didn't want the sympathy vote. Mm -hmm. I began shooting leadership videos from a bed bound state. Mm -hmm. I began to do trainings. Mm -hmm. I began to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. I ended up coaching an international sales team. Mm -hmm. I trained them. Wow. Um, a mm -hmm. client of mine had businesses in nine countries. I trained her sales team. Mm -hmm. um, I began to coach professionals, um, lawyers, doctors, mm -hmm. accountants. And, and I, I did not hide the fact that I was in a bed bound right. condition. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. As I began to embrace it and see the gift in it all, mm -hmm. my healing, what took me years, mm -hmm you know, to, 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 to do, I ended up doing in months. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, today I, I have completely healed. Those wounds are gone, right. all gone. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm doing physical therapy to get back on my feet and Ooh. stand and walk mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I'm doing my dissertation. Mm -hmm. um, but my, I built a solid mm -hmm. multiple six figure business. Mm -hmm. And um, now I'm working on creating it and moving it to seven figures. Mm -hmm. But it all came through by learning how to dance with adversity, right. learning how to move with mm -hmm. it, learning how to. Now, it didn't come from mm -hmm. overcoming adversity. Right. Actually, it was my ability to dance with mm -hmm. it to transform my right. life. Mm -hmm. it yeah, it wasn't everything. just accepting it. It yeah. really was taking it to that next level. Yeah, just just really learning mm -hmm. how to move with it, mm -hmm. understand what it was trying to show me. Mm -hmm. I for years I fought it and said that it mm -hmm. was in the way. Right. Now I see it as the mm -hmm. way. Right. Most of our obstacles are not really things mm -hmm. to keep us from doing something. What it's doing is actually teaching us a different way mm -hmm. to right. do something. Right. Uh, or a new way to do a thing. Mm -hmm. And so that thing that I leveraged was mm -hmm. my adversity mm -hmm. and it was, it turned into my greatest advantage mm -hmm. and uh, gave me a platform where now people hire me, not because of my, you know, academia mm -hmm. or anything else. They hire me because they know I've been through something. Right. They know I've, I've experienced challenges. Mm -hmm. They know I understand what a setback looks like mm -hmm. and I know how to navigate Mm -hmm. setbacks and turn them into tremendous comebacks mm -hmm. um, in life. Right. So it doesn't get any better than that. And that's mm -hmm. exactly why I choose to be a results coach mm -hmm. versus any other mm -hmm. kind of coach, because my business is really all about mm -hmm. getting results. Right. You know, and what I love about this is you mentioned that, you know, that before all of this happened, you were in banking. If this hadn't happened, you might still be in banking, yeah. just kind of cruising along, yeah. you know, doing things that, and, and that would have been fine. But because of what happened, you found your passion in life. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, it, it's, it, I, I resonate with this because um, I, I was diagnosed with cancer and had issues. We'll just say issues. I mean, I had my 19th surgery not long ago. And, you know, and I, like you, spent a lot of time in the hospital and, you know, all these various things. And we're not saying that there aren't times that you don't feel sorry for yourself. You know what? There just are. Um, but the point is, you reduce that time, you have that little pity party, and then you go, okay, now what? Um, you know, and, 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 and that really is the important. And it doesn't matter if it's you know, something physical like what you have gone through or, you know, obviously a lot of people right now because of the pandemic have lost their jobs or, you know, all of these various things. And so what really is important is to stop and think what's next. You know, I'm going to stop feeling sorry for myself, accept and take it to that next level. And, and I think that's what you talk about when you when you talk about adaptive resilience. So talk about that a little bit more. So there's a guy by the name of Mark Robinson. He um, he did a paper on adaptive resilience. This mm -hmm. term is used a lot in the form of art. Okay. And um, what it speaks to is the notion of having the ability to um, maintain mm -hmm. core values and core beliefs okay. in the midst of adversity. Mm -hmm and being able to adapt 
to that adversity mm -hmm. without losing who you truly are. Right. I'm totally paraphrasing this, but it's the dynamic to mm -hmm. basically remain true to who you are mm -hmm. in the midst of disturbing mm -hmm. circumstances and then still being able to adapt mm -hmm. and accomplish the same right. thing that you set out to do. Mm -hmm. You may have to take a different path, mm -hmm. but the goal never changes right. and your persistence it never changes. Mm -hmm. You just become more resilient mm -hmm. in the pro in the in the process. Mm -hmm. You develop buoyancy, if mm -hmm. you will. Like mm -hmm. you may get knocked underwater, but you don't stay there. Right. Um, you may be thrown against the wall, but you mm -hmm. come back. It's just it's just as it's literally as natural as that, mm -hmm. and and that's a very powerful skill mm -hmm. to have. Um, I tell people even now that when you're scaling the best thing that could ever happen to you is a valley mm -hmm. um, because it's in the valley that you learn how mm -hmm. right. to come up. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the valley that you learn how mm -hmm. to navigate pitfalls mm -hmm. and, and things um, that most people right. don't get. Mm -hmm. And you learn how to cut away with what's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you ever navigate that and get that down when you're scaling, Mm -hmm. it becomes less of a challenge mm -hmm. for you. It becomes something very powerful. Right. Um, it's in those valleys of our life mm -hmm. that we gain our greatest lessons. Mm -hmm. And it uh, teaches us the things that help us not only go to a new level, mm -hmm. but how to sustain next level right. success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then when the next valley comes, you're able to get out of it maybe more quickly you've got those tools, all of those various things and keep climbing. I mean, you know, we're not just going back to this level field because that's pretty boring, you know, it, it, but it's also safe. And I think that's one of the hardest things for people to understand is that safe is okay. And, you know, and we understand safe, you know, safe is taking home that paycheck, getting those benefits, you know, all of those various things, being able to pay your bills. But when we're challenged, that's when life really has its meaning. Yeah. I mean, my mentor says to me, like safety is for children. Right. When we're and, children. And we still we're bounce told, and we get back up when yeah, we're kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, know, you think about it, it's like, don't touch that. Mm -hmm. Don't do like you right. don't you don't really right. understand how this could harm uh -huh. you. We get that when we're children, mm -hmm. right? The problem of it is many of us carry that with us when we're adults, right? And we're too safe. Yeah, we're too. And cautious. we ride the, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're entirely too cautious. Mm -hmm. We lose our whole sense of risk taking. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, man, if I had the imagination and risk take tolerance mm -hmm. that I had when I was a young child, mm -hmm. I'd be a billionaire several oh, times can you over imagine? Yeah. right now. It's like uh -huh. there was nothing that could keep me from using my imagination mm -hmm. and doing things when I was, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it was so amazing, mm -hmm. but like many of us would give our left arm mm -hmm. for that kind of right. risk tolerance mm -hmm. and, and ability to pursue and, mm -hmm. you know, no caution to the wind mm -hmm. and just, psh, you know, right. let's just go after right. it. Right. Um, but we, unfortunately, we stay very tied to mm -hmm. our, you know, our backstories and mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't need to do this. This is not safe. I, mm -hmm. I tell people all the time when I came up, people were just telling us if you got a, a great job or if you went into computer programming, uh, when, when the new, when the millennium comes around, um, as long as you could pro com, uh, program cobalt, you right. could write your own check, mm -hmm. right? And then and then the millennium comes and nothing happens. Right, right. We went to, to <laughs> 2000 and that little past that tick and nothing happened. The computers nothing. didn't stop. The world nothing went, happened. go, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it, it, and then now what? You got all these people looking to be able mm -hmm. to write their own paycheck and it never happened. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And and it's, it's our ability to stay true to our core purpose mm -hmm. and adapt however whatever that mm -hmm. means you know right. do i need to reinvent myself at this time mm -hmm. do i need to just simply evolve like right. what is it mm -hmm. do i need to do mm -hmm. in order for me to be effective right. in this period of time mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I think that's what being bed bound 10 years taught me. Mm -hmm. It taught me how to not be conditioned mm -hmm. by my condition. Right. I, I could always visualize myself in a different place. Mm -hmm. I could always visualize myself in a different state. I, mm -hmm. I held tight on mm -hmm. to the person that I wanted to be. Right. And through doing that, it literally, it mm -hmm. kept me from crawling under the bed. It kept mm -hmm. me from shutting down, feeling mm -hmm. like I lost sense with life. Like I, I like I wasn't even connected with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you go through all those things when you're isolated, right. you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're shut in, you, mm -hmm. you, you encounter these things and I was going through it. Mm -hmm. I was going through it right. and um yeah it wasn't Pollyanna I, you no, you went no, through all it, that it mm -hmm. was it was definitely real mm -hmm. however my ability to see myself in a different place mm -hmm. and it's so important right uh see myself in a different state and mm -hmm. take action from that place mm -hmm. um really changed really changed my mm -hmm. life and it caused me to you know to learn how to mm -hmm. not learn how to rise above my mm -hmm. condition to not allow myself mm -hmm. to be conditioned by the condition I was mm -hmm. in. Right. My circumstances, environment, mm -hmm. they did not dictate the right. way I saw right. myself. Yeah. You know, there, there's obviously certain things you have to deal with. Yes. But it doesn't stop you. Um, you know, and, and I think that's the, the important thing. And, you know, and, and especially now during this pandemic where people are thinking, but this is the way I've always done business. You know, and, and, you know, back in March when they said, okay, we're going to shut everything down for two weeks, then everything will be hunky-dory. Well, you know, we're still waiting for that two weeks to be over. And so many people are still hanging on to what used to be and how they used to do things. Um, you know, and, and yes, we're obviously going to get through this. At some point, things will, will get back to, it, it won't be normal. It will be different. Um, I think one of the things that so many people have discovered is, you know what, we can work from home. That works really pretty good. Um, you know, we can network online. We don't have to do that. We don't have to have in-person person business meetings. There are these, you know, because of technology and all of those. And, and of course, what we have seen are the people and the companies that said, okay, now what? In a positive way, they're the ones that are being successful. The ones that went, oh God, what's next? are the ones that that are struggling and, and failing. Um, you know, and, and unfortunately, I mean, there were obviously circumstances for many businesses where it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, it, it, but, but they still now have that opportunity to do something new and something different. Um, you know, and, and I think that really is something that we're, we're still, uh, still learning clearly through this time, but it, you know, we're, we're all going through this where things have happened to us and, and I just love it um, that, you know, many, many people really are going, okay, now what? You know, in a, in a positive frame of mind as opposed to, oh, God, now what? Yeah, the things that we've learned how to do in this mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. have been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you look, and uh, while we can find opportunity, we found cases where people lost work. They, right. you know, but there's other cases where mm -hmm. people have crossed you know, seven figure mark, right. they've done amazing oh, yeah. things because mm -hmm. they understood that they had to take a different path. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people had to take the dark path of change. Mm -hmm. Some people had to literally reinvent themselves mm -hmm. right. and others simply just needed to evolve. Mm -hmm. There are some people who, you know, before this kind of thing happened, they were very comfortable doing everything mm -hmm. in their operation. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can't just do everything right. and success mm -hmm. will will drive you out mm -hmm. of business mm -hmm. if you're a person that feels like I have to do everything right. to accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. It will drive you out mm -hmm. of business because right. the way that things are set up now, you can't do this right. alone. Right. You have to have people with you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and having understood that, I was able to really help navigate the process of change that mm -hmm. much better mm -hmm. for individuals because right. that's really what it comes down mm -hmm. to. Like, is it time for change? If it mm -hmm. is time for change, then how do I need to change? Mm -hmm. And how does this change impact all the mm -hmm. other changes? Right. You know, and it, so that way we understand how it all 
um, benefits, how it all connects with everything else that's going on in the world. Right. Yeah. And there's something else that, that I was thinking of when you were talking a little bit ago, and that was our imagination as children. You know, we used to take a cardboard box and it was anything. It could be an airplane. It could be a desk. It could be a fire truck. I mean, all of these various things. And, you know, and, and we had that youthful imagination. You know, we, we really did, you know, we, we could do anything. You know, we, you had sticks, you did whatever it was with the sticks that, you know, that, that you know, and, and somewhere probably around 12, I think 12, you know, you're getting ready to be a teenager. So you have to be serious. And, and so we forgot that, you know, we, it was like, well, you can't play with it. That's a box, you know, and, and unfortunately, as you said, we've carried that so much into adulthood and it's, well, you know, coach, you can't do that because you need to be able to be on stage. Well, no, you don't. Um, you know, you need to be in front of people. Well, yeah, you just do it differently. And for so many people, I think that is the hard thing is to go back to having that childhood imagination and thinking, Okay, here's my box that I'm in today. What am I going to do with it? And and where are we going forward? You know, I I heard um, uh, LeBron James say earlier this year when they were about when they were they were coming back, mm -hmm. the NBA was restarting. Mm -hmm. He kept saying, "We're built differently. Mm -hmm. We're built differently." Right. Um, and after they won the championship, I'm like, you know what? He's right. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't understand, he didn't understand what they were good at. Mm -hmm. Like he being good at something is mm -hmm. just one thing. Right. But when you're doing what you do best, mm -hmm. it changes the game. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who just love doing what they're good at. Right. Because that's very few and that's that, yeah. safe. Oh, it's that's safe. safe. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was about to get to. Mm -hmm. You took the word right out of my mouth because we like being safe. Right. We are so attracted mm -hmm. to safe. We're so like, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to get, I want to do more, but mm -hmm. don't make me get out of my chair to get it because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what's out there outside of the chair. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, it, it could bite me out there. It could be, you know, there could be awful things out there. Well, there also could be really great things out exactly. there. Exactly, exactly. And and the type of people that I end up working with are individuals who basically encountered something in life that mm -hmm. has paralyzed their potential. Mm -hmm. You know, they've gotten to a place in success in their business and they're questioning, should I do this and mm -hmm. when should I start? Hence the, the whole ideology behind yes, go. Mm -hmm. Because it addresses those two biggest questions. Right. You know, should I do this and when should I start? Mm -hmm. Well, the answers are yes, go. Right. You know, um, As my mother would yeah, say, there's no time like the present. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you can't. You got to you got to learn how to follow your desires. Mm -hmm. Learn how to follow your desires mm -hmm. and allow what's in the path to open itself to mm -hmm. you so that you can get to your next place, your next mm -hmm. And so that's really what it's about. I I end up working with a lot of individuals who mm -hmm. are really good at something, mm -hmm. but they don't know what they do best. Right. They don't understand, nor mm -hmm. do they do what they do best. They're right. just locked into mm -hmm. what they're really good mm -hmm. at. Right. You know, and so much of that in in many cases comes from when we were little kids. And 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 somebody told us you can't or you shouldn't do that. Little girls don't do that. Or, you know, you really need to be that athlete, you know, or you're not smart enough. You know, how many times, you know, or, or you know, all of those various things. And it doesn't matter if it was a parent, a teacher. And in many cases, they were actually trying to protect us, right? Back to that safe thing. You know, they didn't want us to get hurt. So they didn't want us to extend ourselves. Um, I'm a smidge older than you. And so, you know, I was of that generation where, you know, women really were, you know, it, it, we were getting out. We were going to college. We were doing all of those things. But it was still, now you still need to have a family. And, you know, and you still need to be doing this. And why aren't you doing that? And, you know, and obviously, 
that's absolutely somebody's life goal. And, and that's perfect. I mean, you know, I, I remember years ago when we, years ago, when we had our 10th class reunion and somebody said, you know, Hey, we should, you know, figure out who's the most successful. I said, nah, how do we determine that? Well, of course, to that person who had approached it, it was who's making the most money. I said, no, it might be the stay at home mom with four kids who is screaming that's the most successful. I mean, you know, because that was, you know, and, and but, oh, you know, I went off on a diatribe, right? Squirrel. Um, but, it, it, you know, those voices from when we were little, uh, we've got to overcome those because those are those little voices in our head that are telling us we have to stay safe. Now, obviously, we're not talking about mortgaging your house. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you might, there are definitely sometimes, but you, you need to tell that little voice, yes, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, as you just said, yes, go. Yeah, it's it's, it's so that those things really hem us up, mm-hmm. and we find ourselves recruiting people in our life to keep us. Right. They they keep saying that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that we can, so that we don't mm-hmm. have to change. Mm-hmm. But for individuals who who want to be able to get up, but they don't know how, mm-hmm. they've. They've been a, they've been knocked down. Something mm-hmm. severe happened in their mm-hmm. life. Maybe the loss of a loved one, mm-hmm. uh, significant other, um, the loss of a career after so many years. Mm-hmm. This is all I've ever done. I don't right. know how to do anything mm-hmm. else. Um, the paral- paralysis of a potential is a very mm-hmm. serious and dangerous place to right. be. Um, and so, I much of the you know the type of people that I work with. They have the I know buts. Mm -hmm. I know know. I should do this, but. But, Mm -hmm. yes. And it goes all the back to the things that you're saying. Mm -hmm. And um, we address those questions because, um, you know, it's not always the here's something you don't have to do. Here's something you do. You don't need an education. You don't need a such and such. Mm -hmm. You don't need a degree to do Mm -hmm. this. You don't even need prior sales experience. Just try this here. Mm -hmm. And people want to be able to know how can they achieve their pursuit of mm-hmm. happiness with the least amount of resistance. Right, right. Because resistance isn't that. fun. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, it's not. But what they come to understand is like, what you don't realize is you're already in resistance. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing the thing that allows you to bring the good in your life, mm-hmm. you're resisting mm-hmm that good in your life by doing something else. Mm -hmm. Um, And whether it's that backstory or whether Mm -hmm. it's a blind spot Mm -hmm. or um, even down to how you manage your productivity Mm -hmm. within time, Mm -hmm. all of that leads to the results that you get in your life. And if you're not mindful of those things, it can create significant blocks. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that I found interesting about the pandemic (coughs) is people are being forced to do this. You know, they they're having to rethink what's going on, Um, you know, and much as as you had to, um, you know, or or even I had to. I mean, you know, I was I was doing pretty good with what I was doing. And then that doctor said, we're really sorry to tell you that you've got cancer. Um, And and at first I thought, oh, And my, uh, yeah, um, you know, and, and, and it's kind of like somebody kept saying, yeah, right. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, not going to stop me. I mean, you know, it's like people are like, oh my God, you've had 19 surgeries. And I'm like, yep. And we just keep going and I'm sure there's going to be more. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Um, but, you know, you, you just keep going. And so, you know, for the people, especially right now that, that have, you know, their business has changed, their work life has changed. Okay, folks. Let's make it into a positive, um, you know, and one of the things that, that you mentioned was leveraging without limits. So talk to us about that. Yeah. So the dynamic of leveraging without limits has everything, repeat, everything to do with raising your level of awareness. Mm-hmm. You can only succeed in life to the level that you are aware. Right. Um outside of awareness very little is possible Mm -hmm. except the fact that you're going to lose you're going to waste a lot of time Mm -hmm. um so the ability to leverage without limits 
is really speaks to the dynamic of awareness mm -hmm. and efficiency. Mm -hmm. And the one quote that I spend a lot of time around efficiency is the thing that my mentor tells me all the time. What would this look like if it were easy? Yeah. And my first thought would be boring. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, the thing of it is, it's like, it, it's the most incredible things mm -hmm. come through very monotonous processes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, ask anybody who lifts weights for a living, mm -hmm. like, what's that exciting thing you get to do? And they will tell you, they will go back to their routine. Mm -hmm. It's about getting up in the morning at five right. o'clock, going mm -hmm. to the gym, doing this and that. And then you watch them eat and mm -hmm. it's, oh, you do this every day, mm -hmm. like clockwork. Yep. That whole thing that it, it as one, one of my um, mentors put it, success is never so much about what you do. Mm -hmm. It's about what you do daily. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's about the things that you do daily. Mm -hmm. And that stuff is going to get boring. If you ask right. anybody who's into fitness, it's mm -hmm. a very boring thing. Right. The, 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 it, but mm -hmm. it, it, the, the energy mm -hmm. that you're able to put into it and mm -hmm. feeling your body getting better, it's like mm -hmm. it's all worth it. Right. But, oh, I got to you know limit myself to these amount of foods because you know, mm -hmm. you're trying to eat healthy. You can't mm -hmm. eat everything. No. And so, and what is life, you know, mm -hmm. if you can't have sugar, you know, for all of us who have a different value system, like, mm -hmm. well, what is life if you can't have some sugar in it? Mm -hmm. Or if you can't have this in it, or mm -hmm. you can't have that, what is life? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a very, it's just a very, you know, interesting piece. Mm -hmm. right. Very interesting piece. And we get ourselves so caught up into, you know, what does and doesn't, you know, that we find ourselves mm -hmm constantly looking for excitement mm -hmm. that literally doesn't move you. You would right. rather be entertained mm -hmm. than <laughs> empowered mm -hmm. to move right. forward. Right. And that's the biggest, that's the biggest downfall. Mm -hmm. Cause again, entertainment keeps you, it, it keep you unconscious. Like mm -hmm. you don't really understand. Right. It, it comes back to that noise that you were talking yeah. about before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. So now I, I love this, and and this you know this was in in your information that you sent to me in several places. How do you make it to the top when you can't take the stairs? Really, it's the dynamic of. Well, I'm I'm releasing that in a book, and I won't let people know all about that. But I will start. I'll give you a little little point here. Oh, so I get to have you on again, so we can talk about a book. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's called. Um, leverage without limits, how cool. to make it to the top when you can't take the stairs. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about how to make it to the top when you can't take the stairs, mm -hmm. you there's several things you gotta have. You you have to have, um, you gotta make a decision mm -hmm. about, you know, to follow your desire. You gotta have a burning desire. Mm. I'm not talking about, a, oh yeah, that would be nice to do yeah. desire. I'm talking okay. about mm -hmm. something you would be willing to trade your life for, mm -hmm. like a moth to the flame. Mm -hmm. It desired to be one with the flame so much it was willing to risk mm -hmm. dying right. to be one with mm -hmm. what it was fascinated with. Mm -hmm. Do Are you fascinated with what you desire? Mm -hmm. Number two, you have to have a commitment. You got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You got to have a burning decision. Like, you know what? I've got, I'm making a decision to do mm -hmm. this. I'm not, because nothing changes till you make a decision. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes. Um, number three, you got to have a commitment. You got to mm -hmm. have an undying commitment mm -hmm. to it, to, to see it through, be persistent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be willing. A commitment is an equivalent of willingness. Mm -hmm. um, am I capable is one question. Mm -hmm. Am I willing is the other. Mm -hmm. Am I willing to do whatever it takes? Mm -hmm. Am I going to go all in and with my money, with my energy, with my effort, mm -hmm. with my resource, with everything? Am I willing to do it? You have to have a vision. Mm -hmm. You have to have a vision because your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. Right. So you have to have a vision about, you know, where it is that you want to go. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have faith mm -hmm. because faith at its core is mm -hmm. assumption. It is not, 
it is not, oh, you know, oh yeah, I got faith, but no, no, no. It's the ability to assume the vision that mm-hmm. you have for your life, mm-hmm. to see it and step into it mm-hmm. and live life as right. if, mm-hmm. as if you already were that person, mm-hmm. uh, to do things as if you were already mm-hmm. that person. I call it coming from a place called done. If you do that Ooh, and like you that. are, if you are completely mm-hmm. um, persistent, you, you, you have adaptive resilience, you refuse to be denied, you learn how to dance with adversity, and you have that undenying, undeniable commitment. Mm-hmm. I just will not be that, that, that audacious type energy. If you have that working in your favor, you can ultimately make it to the top. You can make it by leveraging Mm -hmm. everything in your life, Mm -hmm. leveraging something Mm -hmm. in your life to create something you want. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure people want to know now how they find you and how they connect with you. So, so how do they do that? Okay, so you can actually reach me at my website, coachamwilliams.com. Perfect. I'm in social media, Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram as well. Just look up Coach A.M. Coach a. Williams, Coach A.M. Williams. I'm on Facebook. I mean, whatever, um, f- connect with me. I, mm-hmm. We have some great conversations, even on my personal page. You can mm-hmm. connect with me there as well. And I uh, would love to, to have you be a part of it and get your feedback on some of the stuff we're talking about. Great. I love it. You know, because it is about being resilient. Um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, folks, we know it's hard. I mean, we're not saying that this is, you just go, okay, I'm going to be resilient. You know, that, that comes back to being Pollyanna. Um, you know, this is hard. You know, and in some cases, you're going against everything that you were taught and you're however many years old you are. Um, but it's, you'll find that it's also worth it in the end when you do that. Indeed. It's got to go beyond intellectual agreement. Right. I love it. Well, Coach, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave people with? Yeah, I want to basically say, first of all, it's been a pleasure. Oh, this is such fun. With you, uh, Deb, and I want to encourage people Mm -hmm. to make sure that they keep watching your show and um, they keep listening in because, um, you know, I, it, it's just an honor to be a part of it with so many influencers, so many great people, um, including yourself. Um, uh, and through this program, so much information. If you're wanting to seriously change, find an influencer who feeds you and mm-hmm. continue to stay with that person um, and allow them to feed you and then feed what feeds you. Right. And you will find yourself being successful every single time. Perfect. I love it. Well, I've been having a great time talking with you. And as I said, I can't wait to do this again. So keep us posted about when the book comes out, because I love that concept when you can't get, let's see. Oh, I almost said it was, how do you get to the top when you can't take the stairs? I mean, that really is so much fun. And I'm going to love chatting with you about that again. So again, you can be found at coachamwilliams.com or as you said, just Google you and you'll you'll turn up everywhere. <laughs> I'm Deb Creer. I've been having a fascinating discussion with Coach A.M. Williams. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.